If you mention the name John Bunyan to pretty much anyone, they will know that he was a preacher and the writer of the Pilgrim's Progress. They may also know that he was a prisoner of conscience. Perhaps, however, the evidence that during his youth and early adult life he was a tinker by trade has been somewhat mislaid. But these days we understand that one's early experiences will have a lasting effect on us throughout our lives. And so in this video, we're going to explore how John Bunyan the Tinker influenced John Bunyan the Preacher and Writer. In the 1600s, all artefacts were made from natural materials. Wood, leather, horn and metal. Whatever material was used, nothing was mass produced and required the skills of the maker who would have learned their trade from a young age. John Bunyan was one such maker, and here is an example of his workmanship, a beautiful metal violin which can be seen in the Bunyan Museum. John Bunyan's father was a tinker or brazier. He worked with metal, both making and mending vital equipment for the home and tools for the labourer. In Grace Abounding, John Bunyan's autobiography, Bunyan describes the tinker as being of that rank that is the meanest and most despised of all families in the land. The word tinker was certainly used as an insult, both at the time and for a few centuries after, and although most people needed the skills of the tinker, John Bunyan himself was forever conscious of his lowly status. As a child, he would have learned the skills of a tinker from his father, helping to stoke the fire and bringing the water for the cooling. At the same time, we know that he had some education until he was 14, and so was also developing the skills he would later need for preaching and writing. But did the experience of being a tinker continue to be a force and an influence throughout his life? And if so, what is the evidence? When John Bunyan became a tinker in his own right at the age of 14, he would have become used to travelling around beyond his own front door, to seek out work and effect repairs and commissions for the wealthier houses around the county. He also had to carry the tools of his trade, the heavy iron anvil, the important hammers and the tongs and the leather bucket. In travelling around, John would have seen a bit more of his county of birth than he might have done growing up. The hills and valleys, the streams and rivers, and of course he would have noted the pleasant easy paths and the more tricky winding stony tracks. We can imagine John cursing as he travelled the harder roads and greatly preferring to take the easier routes, even if it extended his journey or even made him late. Furthermore, he would have come into contact with the highs and lows of society, which made up his customers at the time. The loud and unsubtle working people who would flock to the marketplace where he set up his tools. The men and women who he might get a glimpse of when he visited the wealthy houses to ply his trade. What did John make of this great variety of place and life? Well, he was a rebel himself and possibly didn't judge the behaviour of others at the time but he certainly recorded it in his memory. And a reading of the Pilgrim's Progress shows us how deeply these experiences resonated with his later deep commitment to God and his beliefs. Firstly, the main character, Christian, has a burden. In the story, his heavy burden is his great sin and unworthiness. John could empathize with that. He knew himself to be a sinner from an early age and could almost certainly recall the physical weight of his tools of the trade, which he needed to carry around with him. It's not hard to see how he transposed that experience into the pain and discomfort of carrying the burden of a sinner. John sends Christian on a long journey to lose that burden and attain his place in the celestial city. It's no accident that Christian's spiritual journey can be so easily mapped in John's own physical journeys around Bedfordshire. For example, the wicket gate which Christian passes through at the beginning of his journey 
is thought to be the gate to Elstow Parish Church. It is a gate which John would have passed through often to reluctantly attend church on a Sunday. The cross, where Christian is able to lay down his burden, is believed to be the cross at Stevington, a place which John would have visited as a tinker and probably later to preach. The Hill of Difficulty is almost certainly the steep hill to Amptill. And the House Beautiful, the place that John was most likely making for at the top of this hill, known as Houghton House. Vanity Fair, that place of viciousness and sin, is probably based on John's own experience of, of watching rogues, actors and jugglers at work at the Mayfair in Bedford. But we know that John also remembered his pleasant experiences in and around the town. They went on their way to a pleasant river. On either side of the river was a meadow curiously beautified by lilies and it was green all year long. Whilst writing that in his dreary prison, John was almost certainly remembering his view of the river from the town bridge during happier moments. The people and types of people John met on his travels also pop up to challenge or comfort Christian under such names as Faithful, Lord Hategood and Mr Worldly Wiseman to name but few. Bunyan the preacher had a constant verbal battle with the great and the good because he often called out their unchristian attitudes. Clearly, the journey and experiences of the tinker were not experiences which John Bunyan the preacher put behind him, but instead built upon them to become the man we mostly remember. Indeed, the tinker is the thread which binds the two and enabled John to write a story which was, and is, so accessible to everyone, whatever walk of life they come from. <laughs>